Hey, I know I'm not qualified to do this. Every frame of painting was the tag team of the talented Taylor Ramos and Tony Zhu, a YouTube channel created five years ago in the wake of a singular problem. There's actually a lot of great videos on the internet analyzing movie content or themes, but I think we're missing stuff about the actual form. You know, the pictures and the sound. And the audience absolutely loved it. Of the thousands of YouTubers I've watched, I have never seen a channel so universally respected as every frame of painting. And in the last five years, their genre has exploded. A genre known as the video essay. How do you start a movie? So what makes the scene so effective? In the movie Shark Tale, the sharks are pretty weird. Video essays are a pretty simple idea. Take your basic essay and repackage it for a modern audience in a modern medium. Ever since the very beginning, Quentin Tarantino was a master of the needle drop. And its success has been really exciting. We have an entire community based around learning from and exploring the content we love, from movies to video games to YouTube. We tested 15,000 common words and So how? In holy's name of the hundreds, if not thousands of channels centered around making video essays has not a single one stopped to say, hey, maybe we should take a look into why every frame of painting was so special. Yeah, I know I'm not qualified to do this, but apparently I'm the only one willing to try. So if I'm gonna do this, we should probably start simple. This is In Praise of Chairs, one of my favorite videos from Every Frame of Painting. It's five minutes long, which is about average for them. This is the transcript. One and a half pages, 12 point font, double spaced. This is insane to me. That's more than three minutes per page. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Because as quality as Every Frame's videos are, they're not complicated, but they are efficient. Take a look at Every Frame's first video. His intro takes 30 seconds and he's already onto the first point. So there's two techniques combined that I wanna bring up today. So if I wanna be more efficient, how do I do it? Well, let's imagine Every Frame's thought process. They want to make a video about how chairs are used in production design. First, they come up with some points that they want to talk about. For each point, they find a few examples. Add a conclusion, a slick outro, polish up a thesis, think of a teaser, snazzy up the title, and stamp on a signature. Hi, my name is Tony, and this is Every Frame of Painting. On the page, every frame's not doing anything fancier than your basic five paragraph essay, but they take this structure and hug closely to it. Each element only takes up a few sentences. By staying this concise, they keep the pace slick. By sticking to the structure, each video feels full and satisfying despite the fact that their videos are really short. In a meta dominated by 10 minute plus videos to maximize watch time, these are an anomaly. But I think that's a big part of every frame's success. Longer videos can increase watch time for those willing to commit to the view, but these videos can also scare off people who aren't willing to spend that much time. So when they see a thumbnail like this, just a few minutes long, even someone who might never have heard of Drive might think to themselves, eh, looks kinda cool. This makes these videos easy to watch and very accessible. But don't get me wrong, I love long videos. I'm just saying that there's a balance, and whatever balance a YouTuber needs is specific to them. But of course, there are other benefits to keeping videos short as well, such as allowing time to focus on editing. And this is where every frame of painting really starts to shine. But editing is complicated, so to make things simpler, let's divide editing into two kinds. We'll call them film editing and YouTube editing. YouTube editing is all about a mastery of software, understanding the tools at our disposal and knowing which ones will make the best impact. This is the aspect of editing that a lot of YouTubers have gotten really good at, and the specific techniques they use can end up becoming part of their style. But these are techniques that would never be used in a film, because film editing is much more invisible. Instead of being about software, it's about a mastery of rhythm, about knowing what footage to use and how to transition between them. It can seem simple, 
It is simple, but it is incredibly difficult to master, which, by the way, every frame of painting has. This rhythm is where lesser creators fail. It starts with the script. By keeping their points short, every frame keeps us moving to new, interesting things, but it goes far beyond that. Look at how they use film clips. The most boring way is for visual interest. We can't just have a black screen, so while Tony's talking about Fincher, we get clips of Fincher movies. This doesn't affect the rhythm at all, it's just a little more engaging. But a more interesting and pragmatic way is using clips as examples. This is what stands out the most from every frame of painting. In some examples, the clips just play in the background as he talks. To make a creepy scene even creepier, to show us love at first sight. These don't affect the rhythm much. But in others, they bring in sound so you can experience it yourself. I'm not fucking leaving! <laughs> and every frame has to be careful. So if you pay attention, you'll notice that each clip with sound is almost always just a few seconds. <laughs> And because of how these clips affect the rhythm, every frame makes sure to pace them accordingly. Notice how they space out no sound clips and those with sound. Or a little more run down. No sound. Whether our characters have very little money. No sound. Or plenty of it. Sound. You can't sell leaf tables and no chairs. Chairs you got a dinette set. No chairs you got dick. The head of the monarchy. No sound. The captain of the ship. No sound. Or the ruler of the whole empire. Rhythm. Welcome, young Skywalker. This is fascinating to me. While they're primarily here to support his points, these clips end up driving the pace, the rhythm. Every frame knew this and made sure to use it to their advantage. Here in the intro to In Praise of Chairs, this clip is pure rhythm. Sure, there's a chair in the shot, but there's nothing in the script to signal that a clip needs to be here. It's just a fun way to segue into my last point, which is, that the single most important concept to learn from every frame of painting? It's not the writing, and it's not the editing. It's... Music is insane. It is far too complicated for me to fully understand, so let's focus on three aspects that we need to think about when using music in a video. For video essays, the first thing to think about is the energy. There's this joke slash criticism that video essays just throw lo-fi hip-hop into the background, but it's for good reason. Lo-fi hip-hop sets a really good energy for a video essay. If our music is too much, we won't be able to keep up, but if it's too slow, the audience is going to fall asleep. And transitioning into our second concept, lo-fi hip-hop also keeps things emotion neutral, which is really hard to do with music. Music is inherently emotional, and while a little emotion can be effective, it's really easy for it to come across as corny and cheap. So lo-fi ends up being the safest option. We can see every frame of painting using lo-fi in In Praise of Chairs. But watching all of their work, you'll realize that they use much more than just that. So if we want to use more interesting music, where do we start? Well, how about with association? If you've got a video about some black and white films, maybe pop in some jazz. It's exciting, upbeat, and calls back to an older period. But if we're talking about modern film and the internet, jazz ain't gonna cut it. We're gonna need something a little more digital. If we're talking about our hometown of Vancouver, maybe utilize some local talent. Or if the film's soundtrack is fire, maybe just use that. You're not obligated to do any of these, but they can be a good starting point. And these might not be as safe as lo-fi, but they're a lot more interesting. But when using music, something to think about is not just what track to use, but also how many. The most obvious choice is just one. But even when every frame does this, like in their Who Wins the Scene video, Notice how they pace the video around the track, so that when the characters finally come together, the music hits its triumphant climax. Finally, they're together in the same frame, the camera looking up, and we understand that this is the beginning of a relationship. Go now. I don't think Mix could manage again quite so soon, even though he is crazy. Go now! But often, every frame won't just use one track, they'll use many. 
This might seem unintuitive, but it's actually really useful. Some tracks work nice right off the bat. Yes, this is Jackie speaking. Others can be fun credit songs. Or when a particularly fun section of the music comes up, they're not afraid to pause the narration and just let us enjoy. But what's important to remember is sometimes the tracks themselves matter less than how we transition between them. One of Every Frame's favorite music quirks is actually stopping the music and then playing a new track to move into the next section. You'll notice them doing this a lot moving from the intro to the first point. Sometimes the new music is hard to notice. I put them all in two separate videos linked below. First off, a shot from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Other times it's practically smacking you in the face. How does an editor think and feel? But all of them help you feel the video's structure, and instead of being flat, they take you on a journey. Because these video essays aren't just essays. They're stories. And unfortunately, the story of every frame of painting has come and gone. So while video essays have gone through a massive boom, there's always room for a few more. But it can be hard when such a large subsection of the community is so obsessed with gatekeeping. There's this idea that if you're not an absolute expert, you shouldn't be able to talk about it. If you know nothing more about a topic than the average Joe, you should not be making video essays on that topic. And I think that's bullshit. Yeah, being educated in a field is really helpful, and it's always important to keep your own level in perspective. But what are video essays about if not learning? Being unqualified might not be so bad, because now there's a reason to jump in and start learning. But when you're done, make sure to make a video and let everyone in on your findings. Hi, my name is Pretentious, and this is How To YouTube. And, um, peace. I'd like to thank you for watching. And wish you all a very pleasant good evening.